Ashley Brock Green, Nora Roberts' book, Sea Swept, Chapter 15. Anna kept her mouth firmly shut until they were out of the building and safely alone in the parking lot. Cam, for God's sake! For God's sake what? This is where I work! She stopped at his car, turned to face him. Where I work, remember? I can't come storming into my office like an outraged lover! Took her chin in her hand. Took her chin in a hand again, leaned his face close. I am an outraged lover. I want the name of the son of a bitch who put his hands on you. She wouldn't allow herself to be thrilled by the violence sparking around him. It would be, she reminded herself, at her stomach. It would be, she reminded herself, as her stomach gave it a delicious little hop. Completely unprofessional. The person in question is being dealt with, with the pro by the proper authorities, and you're not allowed to be a lover, outrage or otherwise, during business hours. Yeah, try and stop me. He challenged and leaned with his temper, crushed his mouth to hers. She wiggled for a minute. Anyone could speak out an office window and see them. The kiss was too hot, too heaty for daylight embrace in the office parking lot. The kiss was also too hot, too heaty to resist. She gave in to it, to him, to herself, and wrapped her arms around him. Will you cut it out? She said against his mouth. No. Okay, then. Let's take this indoors. Good idea. With the mouse, his mouth still on hers, he reached back to open the car door. I can't get in until you let me go. Good point. He released her, then surprised her by gently, tenderly brushing his lips over the bruise on her cheek. Does it hurt? Her heart was still floppy. Maybe a little. She got inside, deliberately reaching for her seatbelt, keeping her moves efficient and casual. What happened? Yes, as he slid in beside the car. Beside her. A bruise of father of three, wife beater, didn't care for my testimony in family court today. He shoved me. I had my back toward... Turned or he'd had gotten a hard knee to the groin, but as it was, I was off balance. Did a nose dive, which would have been embarrassing, but for the fact that he's now in lockup and the kids are where their foster family. And the wife? I can't help her. In a letter, he can head fall back. You have to pick your battles. He said nothing to that. He'd been thinking the same thing. That's why he decided to dump three kids on Ethan and come see her. He made up his mind to tell her about the insurance investigator, the speculations of Bob's connection to his father, the search that Philip had initiated and instigated for Seth's mother. He decided to tell her everything, to ask her advice to get her take. Now he found himself wondering if that was the wisest choice for her, for him, for Seth. Who'd wait, he told himself, and rationalized his postponement. She'd have a rough time. Need a little attention. So, do you get knocked around much in your line of work? Hmm? No. She laughed a little as he pulled up in front of her building. Now and again, somebody takes a swing or throws something at you, but mostly it's just verbal abuse. Fun job. It has its moments. She took his hand, walked alongside him. Did you know that television is tool of the communists left? I haven't heard that. I heard the, I'm here to tell you. She used the key to check her mail slot, gathering letters and bills and fashion magazines. Sesame Street is just a front. I always suspected that big yellow bird. Nah, he's just a shield. The frog's the mastermind. She put her finger to her lips as they approached the door. They snuck in together like kids hook in school. I just didn't want to have the sisters fussing over me. Mind if I do. That depends on your definition of fussing. We'll start here. He slipped his arm around her waist, touched his lips to hers. I suppose I could tolerate that. She helped him deepen the kiss. What are you doing here, Cam? I had a lot on my mind. His lips brushed over the bruise again and lowered her, her jaw. You mostly. I wanted to see you. Be with you. Talk to you. Make love to you. Her lips go against him. Oh, at the same time. Why not? I did have this thought about taking you out to dinner, but now I'm thinking maybe we could order pizza. Perfect, she said with a sigh. Why don't you pour us some wine, and I'll change. There's this other thing. He worked his way over to her ear. Something I've been wanting to do. I've been wondering what it would be like to get Miss Spinelli out of one of her dedicated, dedicated public servant suits. Have you? Since the first time I saw you. She smiled wiggly. Now's your chance. I was hoping you'd say that. He brought his mouth back to his hungry ear now. More possessive. This time, her side caught on a trembling gasp as he jerked her jacket off her shoulders and trapped her on. I'm on the hell out of you. Day and night. Her voice was throaty now, darkening. I guess that makes it handy, since I want the hell out of you, too. It doesn't scare you. 
Nothing about you and me scares me. What if I said I want you to let me do anything I want to you? Everything. The right fluttered to her throat, but her eyes stayed steady. I'd say who's stopping you? With desire, dark and dangerous in his eyes, he came to gaze down. Then back to her face. I wonder what Miss Spinelli wears under these prim little blouses. I don't think a man like you is going to let a few buttons keep him from finding out. You're right. He shifted his hands from her jacket to the crisply pressed cotton on her blouse and ripped. He watched her eyes go wide and shocked. In and around. If you want me to stop, I will. I won't do anything you don't want. He tore her blouse and it thrilled her. He waited, watching for her to say stop or go. It was her even more. She understood she hadn't been completely truthful when she told him nothing about them scared her. She was afraid of what might be happening to her heart. But here in physical love, she knew she could match him. I want everything. All. Oh. His blood leaped. Still, he kept his touch light, teasing her on the back of his hand above the slick white material of her denim cup bra. Miss Spinelli. He jawed it while his fingers slipped beneath the polished satin to rub against her stiffened nipple. How much can you take? His light tugs had heat, had heat spiraling through her system. Already the air was thick. I think we're about to find out. Slowly, his eyes on her face, backed her against the wall. Unless it's already here. Brace yourself. He murmured in his hand, shot under her skirt and tore aside the lacy swatch she wore beneath. Her breath exploded out, and she nearly laughed. Then he plunged his fingers into her, lancing that hard, rough shock of pleasure through her unprepared system. The orgasm ripped through her, empty in her mind, still in her breath, when her knees gave way, simply held her against the wall. Take more. He was desperate to watch her take more, see the shocked excitement capture her face, see those gorgeous eyes go wild and blind. She gripped his shoulders for balance. With her head tipped back, he could see the pulse in her throat beat maddenly. was compelled to taste just there. She moaned against him, moved against him, her breast hitching. When he yanked the jacket and what was left of the blouse away, she was helpless, staggered. The salt on her senses left her limbs shuddering and her heart hammering. She said his name, tried to, but it caught on a gasp as he spun her around. Her damp palms pressed to the wall. He tore her at the bottom of her tore at the bottom of her skirt. She felt to give way, shivering as the material slid over her hips and pulled at her feet. His hands were on her breasts, molding, sliding from satin to flesh and backing in. Then he tore that as well. She gloried in the sound of the delicate material rendering. His teeth nipped into her shoulder, and his hands, all his hands, were everywhere, driving her toward madness. Then beyond, rough palms against smooth skin, clever fingers pressing, sliding. The breath that had tore back into her lips began to slow. Pleasure was thick and midnight dark. She felt herself slipping into some erotic half world where there was only sensation, slick, stunning, and sinful. The way was the wall was smooth and cool. His hands were not. The contrasts were unbearably rousing. He spun her around again. Her eyes were dazzled by the sunlight. He was so full of dress, and she was naked. She found it exquisitely er erotic and could say nothing as he slowly lifted her arms. Above her head, racking in her wrist with one hand, watching her, he combed his hand roughly through her hair, just scattered pins. I want more. He could barely tell me you want more. Yes, I want more. He pressed his body to hers, soft cotton, roughed in him against damp flesh. The kiss he took from her left her mind spinning, then his mouth went to work on her quivering body. He wanted all the tastes of her, the dark honey of her mouth. The damp soak of her breast, there were the creamy taste of her belly, the polished satin of her thighs, then the heat, the furnace flood, as if he licked his way between them. Everything, all, was all he could think, and more. Her hands gripped his hair, pressing his face closer as she climbed the peak. It was her cry, the half-scream, that broke the final link on his control. It had to be now. He freed himself and pressed against I need to feel you, he panted. Painted the words. I want you to watch me when I do. He drove into her where they stood, and their twin groans tangled in the air. Afterward, carried a bed, lay down beside her, curled up against him like a child. A gesture he found surprisingly sweet. He watched her sleep thirty minutes, then an hour. He couldn't stop touching her. A hand through her hair, fingertips over the bruise on her face, stroke over the curve of her shoulder. Had he said he had something inside of him for her? He began to worry just what that something might be. Never felt compelled to stay with a woman after sex. I never felt the need to just look at her while she slept or touch only for the sake of touching and not to arouse. He wondered what odd and slippery level they reached. Then she stirred, sighed, and her eyes fluttered open and focused on him. When she smiled, his heart quite simply turned over in his chest. Hi. 
Did I fall asleep? Look like it to me. He searched for some glib remark, something light and frivolous, but all we could find to say was her name. And, uh, and he lowered his mouth to hers, tenderly, softly, lovingly. The sleep had cleared from her eyes when he drew away, but he couldn't read them. She breathed him once, slowly then out. Again, what was that? Damn if I know. <laughs> Pulls the meat back off. I think we better order that pizza. Relief and disappointment weighed inside her. Anna put all her effort into supporting the relief. Good idea. The number's right next to the kitchen phone. If you don't mind calling it in, I'd like to grab a quick shower. Get some clothes on. All right. With casual intimacy, shook a hand over him. What do you want on it? All I can get. She waited while he laughed and was pleased that he rolled out of bed first. She needed another minute. I'll pour the wine. Terrific. The minute, was the minute she was alone, she turned her face into the pillow and let on a muffled scream of frustration. Steps back? She's not furious with herself. Where did she get the idiotic idea she could take a few steps back? She was over her head in love with him. My fault, she reminded herself. My problem. Sitting up, she pressed a hand to her traitorous heart. In my little secret, she decided. She felt better when she was dressed and had a light shield of makeup in place. She'd given herself a good talking to in the shower. Maybe she was in love with him. Didn't have to be a bad thing. People fall in love, fall in and out of love all the time. And the wise ones, the steady ones, enjoyed the ride. She could be wise and steady. She currently wasn't looking for happily ever after. A white knight, a prince charming, and I had outgrown fairy tales long ago. And all her innocence had cemented into reality on the side of a desert road at the age of 12. She learned to make herself happy because for too many years following the rape, it had seemed she was helpless to do anything but make herself and everyone near her miserable. She survived the worst. There was no doubt she could survive a slightly dented heart. In any case, she'd never been in love before. She had skirted around it, breezed over it, wriggled under it, but had never been run headlong into it. It could be a marvelous adventure. Certainly a learning experience. Any woman who found herself a lover like Cameron Quinn had plenty of blessings to count. So she was smiling when she came into the living room and found Cam, sipping wine, standing under the cover of her latest fashion magazine, put music on. Eric Chaplin was pleading with Layla. When she came up behind him, pecked a kiss on the back of his neck, she didn't expect this jolt of surprise. It was guilt, plain and simple, when he ate it. He nearly bobbled the wine, had to fight to keep his face composed. A pouty face on the cover of the magazine in his hand was a certain long stemmed French model named Martine. Didn't mean to startle you, she raised an eyebrow. She looked at the magazine in his hand. Absorbed with the summer's new pastels, were you? She was passing the time. Peter should be along in a minute. He started to set the magazine down, wanted to seek <laughs> sincerely to bury it under the sofa cushions, but she was nipping it out of his hand. I used to hate her. His throat was uncomfortable dry. Huh? Well, not Martine the Magnificent, exactly. Models like her. Slim and blonde and perfect. I was always too round and too brunette. This, she had given her wet, curly hair a tuck, made me a saint as a teenager. Tried everything imaginable to straighten it. I love your hair. You wish she turned the damn magazine face down. You're twice as beautiful as she is. There's no comparison. Her smile came quick and warm around the edges. That's very sweet. I mean it. He said it almost desperately, but he thought it best not to add that he seen both of them naked and knew what he was talking about. Very sweet. Still, I want so badly to be slim and blonde and hipless. You're real. He couldn't stop himself. Took the magazine, tossed it over his shoulder. She's not. <laughs> That's one way to put it. <laughs> Enjoying herself, she cocked her head. Seems to me you race around the world types. You usually go for the supermodels. It looks so good draped over a man's home. I barely know her. Who? Jesus, he was losing it. Anybody? There's a pizza. <laughs> he said it was great relief. Your wine's on the counter. I'll get the food. I? Without a clue as to what was suddenly making him so edgy, she wandered to the kitchen for a drink. Cam saw that mag that the magazine had fallen face up, so it appeared that Martine was aiming those killer blue eyes right at him. Put back the memory of a scored chick and a spitty female. Cast a weird glance at Anna. Was an experience he cared to repeat. <laughs> it's made the delivery boy. Anna took the wine out of her tiny balcony. Out to her tiny balcony. It's a nice evening. Let's eat out here. She had a couple of chairs and a small folding table set out. Pink drawing mugs and white ink potatoes sprang carefully, cheerfully out of clay pots. If I ever manage to save enough for a house, I want a porch, a big one, like you have. She went back in for plates and apples and a garden. One of these days, I'm going to learn something about flowers. 
house garden porches. More comfortable out in the air, so now I pictured you as a town girl. I always have been. I'm not sure suburbia would suit me. Fences with neighbors just over them, too much little, too much like apartment living. I think without the privacy and convenience. She's a little slice of pizza on her plate. But I'd like to give home only a shot somewhere in the country. Eventually. The problem is, I can't seem to stick to a budget. Yo, he opens up. Miss Spinelli seems to be so practical. She tries. My grandparents were very frugal. Had to be. I was raised with to wash my pennies. She took a bite during a deep, appreciate breath before speaking over a mouthful of cheese and sauce. Mostly... I watched them roll away. What's your weakness? Primarily, she sighed. Clothes? He looked over his shoulder. Through the door there, clothes heaped in a tattered pile. I think I owe you a blouse and a skirt, not to mention the underwear. She laughed. I suppose you do. She stretched out, comfortable on her pale blue leggings and an oversized white t-shirt. This was such a hideous day. I'm glad you came by and changed it. Why don't you come home with me? What? Where the hell did that come from? He wondered. Thought I hadn't even been in his mind when the words popped out of his mouth. But I must have been somewhere for the weekend, he added. Spend this weekend at the house. <laughs> she brought her pizza back to her lips. Vinnie Caroline, I don't think that would be wise. There's an impersonable young boy in your home. He knows what the hell's going on. He began to cut the look, the Miss Spinelli look. Then I, okay, I'll sleep on the sofa downstairs. You can lock the bedroom door. Her lips quivered. Where do you keep the key? This weekend I'll be keeping it in my pocket. But my point is, he continued once you left. You're going to have the bedroom. On a professional level, we'll give you some time with the kid. It's coming along, Anna. And I want to take you sailing. I'll come over Saturday and we can go sailing. Come Friday night. He took her hand. Burn her knuckles to him. Stay till Sunday. I'll think about it. She remembered and drew her hand away. Romantic gestures for going to undo her. And I think if you're going to have a house guest, guess, you should check with your brothers. They may not care to have a woman underfoot for a weekend. They love women, especially women who could cook. Ah, so now I'm supposed to cook. Maybe just one little pot of linguine. Or a dish of lasagna. She smiled, took another slice of pizza. I'll think about it, she said again. Now tell me about Seth. You made a couple buddies today. Really? Terrific. Her eyes lit with such pleasure and interest. He couldn't help himself. Yeah. Had them all up on the roof. Practice catching the mess. They fell off. Her mouth was well fit to shut up. Get on screen. Very funny, Quinn. Gotcha. A kid from Seth's class and his kid brother. I bought them for five bucks of slave labor. Then they wielded it in by out to the house for dinner. So I stuck Ethan with them. Did well, right. You left Ethan alone with three young boys? He can handle it. I did for a couple hours this afternoon. And he called it hadn't been so bad. All he has to do is feed them and make sure they don't kill each other. Their mother's picking them up at 7.30. Sandy McLennan, well, Sandy Miller now, I went to school with her. He shook his head. Amazing about two kids in a minivan. Never would have figured that for Sandy. People change, she remembered, surprised at how much she envied Sandy Miller in her minivan. Or they weren't precise. Or they weren't. Precisely what we imagined them to be in the first place. I guess. Her kids are pistols. Because he said it with such easy good humor, she smiled again. Well, now I see why you popped up at my office. You wanted to escape the madness. Yeah, well, mostly I just want to rip your clothes off. He took another slice of I did both. And he thought, as he sipped his wine and watched the sun go down, with Anna beside him, he felt damn good about it. End of chapter 16.